higher and higher in Jesus' name. We want us to give glory to God for bringing us here once again. Begin to appreciate the Lord Almighty for his mercy. Thank him for his protection. Thank him for his guidance. Thank him for all that he have done for us throughout the week and the opportunity we have to be before him right now. Give him praise, give him honor, give him adoration. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for what you have been doing. Thank you for your covenant of protection, your covenant of peace. Thank you for marking us and making us stand out from all that has been happening. Father, we give you the glory, honor, and adoration. It is just because of your mercy, and we thank you for your mercy. May your mercy continue to sustain us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Bless me one more time. Bless me, Lord. Bless me one more time. Oh, Lord. Heal me, Lord. Heal me one more time. Oh, Lord. My Lord Jesus. Heal me one more time. Oh, Lord. Feel me, Lord, feel me one more time. Oh, Lord, my Lord Jesus, feel me one more time. Oh, Lord, hold me, Lord, hold me one more time. Oh, Lord, my Lord Jesus, hold me one more time. Oh, Lord. Heavenly Father, we bless your name once again. We cannot thank you enough for your mercy. We cannot thank you enough for protection. We cannot thank you enough for what you have been doing in our lives. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Lord Almighty, we are here once again in this faith clinic as we are sung before you. Please bless us again in Jesus' name. Heal us again in Jesus' name. Every problem we might brought today, let there be solution in Jesus' name. We pray for your son and daddy you have been using for us, who have been praying for us in this trying time. Please pray for him in Jesus' name. Increase his grace in Jesus' name. Increase his anointing in Jesus' name. Almighty and everlasting Father, that which only you can do, do it today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God specially that he made it possible for us to watch this telecast again for the faith clinic of today. And we thank Daddy, our Father and the Lord who are giving us the privilege for this program. We pray that God will keep him for us in Jesus' name. Tonight, or this evening, we want to talk about what God said. It's a promise that we want to use in praying today. It says, I will uphold you. That's the topic. I will uphold you. Our text is taken from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. There are a lot of promises in this one verse. And uh, we can start one by one. Each of the promises are very vital and important and useful to our life. But we just want to take one of it. It says, I will uphold thee. In life, everyone needs support and encouragement. It is rare to see someone who succeeded alone without support from anyone. Very rare. But most importantly, 
Without the support of God Almighty, the laborer will walk in vain. In Psalm 127, verse 1, Psalm 127, verse 1, part of it says, Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but in vain. That's why Jesus Christ himself said, Without me, you can do nothing. He didn't say you cannot try or make an effort, but it will be an effort in futility. And life is full of challenges, up and downs everywhere, several things that can bring fears and anxiety to the heart of man. As a matter of fact, what we have been passing through for the past four or five months now are things that have brought fear to the heart of many people, except those who have no God, or those who have God but didn't know the kind of God they, they have. Lot of fear in their hearts. Uh, but God is saying to you and I today, He said, I will uphold you. Irrespective of what you are passing through, regardless of what is happening today, regardless of what people are experiencing, in the midst of it all, He said, I will uphold you. The strong is the one that supports the weak. If, you, if the weak want to support the strong, they will find themselves where they did not bargain for. I remember years back, I was uh, baptizing some people, and there was one hefty and strong man that I have to baptize. I told him, please, you know, release your strength so that uh, things could be easier for me. He agreed. As I dip him into the river, and I wanted to lift him up, because he's weightier than myself, his way pulled me, and we both fell into the river. Anyone dependent on man will fail. You need the support of God. And when God is holding you up, nobody can bring you down. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25, 1 Corinthians 1, 25. It says, The weakness of God is stronger than men. That's the last part of it. The weakness of God is stronger than men. And when you get to Proverbs 23, verse 11, Proverbs 23, 11, it says, For their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. The one who is holding you is mighty. Is very, very strong. There is nothing that contends with him that can stand. He said, who is he that fight against his maker? No situation, no problem that can contend with him when he's holding you up. He will hold you, uphold you today in Jesus' name. Let's go quickly to know what does this mean. Number one. It means it will lift you out of negative trademark. When you read the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 3, 2 to 7, Acts 3, 2 to 7, is a popular story of a blind man who was born blind, never see the light of day right from birth, and they normally carry him because he grew from childhood to adulthood, and they begin to carry him to a location they call Beautiful Gate. At the, at, the, at the front of that gate, all he does was to beg. And this is what he expected one day when he, he came. And God decided to support him, to lift him out of the negative trademark. He, Peter and John were looking at him. And what he knew how to do in life is just to beg. He has never seen that it could be possible for him to walk. He has never seen that he could even fetch for himself. He has never seen that it's possible for him that he will not depend on others before making a decision or choice. Because if those people carrying him refuse to bring him, 
There's nothing he could do. He looked unto, up unto them on a daily basis. But this day, his story changed. Your own story will change today in Jesus' name. Peter said to him, I go, uh, I, I have none, but such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise, rise up and walk. And he lifted him up. He upheld him. You recently we had a series of teachings from lockdown to lifting up. If you don't have it, you can go and buy the tape, which uh, was given to us by our daddy. So you can be lifted up from negative trademark. Why was it this trademark? Everybody knew him as a beggar. They knew they have to carry him to that particular location. The Bible didn't say he changes from one gate to the other. He was always coming to that beautiful gate. And what was doing? What was he doing there? Only to beg. Whatever has reduced you to a beggar. We leave you today in Jesus' name. Because God will uphold you and the challenge will be over in Jesus' name. And any problem that has defined your life that people have recognized you with, today they shall be raised in Jesus' name. Number two, it means I will assist you. Romans chapter 16, verse 12. Romans 16, 1 to 2, sorry. Romans 16, 1 to 2. He said, I commend you, Fabel, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centria, that ye receive her in the Lord as become a saint, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she has need of you. For she has been a succorer of many and of myself also. You know, in Jewish, in Jewish custom, they don't recognize women, neither do they recognize children when they are taking their censor. They will take the population of men without counting women and children. But in this case, there is a woman that stood out and he got a letter of recommendation from Paul where, where she was going. He told the brethren there, please assist her in any business that she wanted to transact. So, upholding means I will assist you. There are things you cannot do by yourself that you need assistance of God. I pray everything that God needs to do for you, He will not leave you to yourself in Jesus' name. So, Apostle Paul recommended this sister for. Any assistant, it's just like a blank check. Any assistant that he might need it. Life becomes very, very easy and without stress when somebody is receiving divine assistance. I used to smile with myself whenever daddy asked me to go and represent him anywhere. I don't think of a multitude. I'm going to pilot my way to the front edge. No. As soon as I get to the gate, I say, I'm represented that the GE the, the, the boy. Immediately, they will pilot by uh, our pastor driving to a very, very good place. And they will guide me to the front row. Why am I saying this? You need divine assistance to succeed. And when God is upholding you, definitely you receive divine assistance. I pray assistance that you needed to excel in life, receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, I will uphold you means I will not let you fall. Proverbs 24 verse 16. Proverbs 24 16. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. If you are a Bible reader, in Matthew chapter 26, 69 to 75, Matthew 26, 69 to 75, Peter fell three times. He denied Jesus Christ three times. First, when a small damsel just said, you are for Jesus, he said no. Another maid said, he look at you, I've been with Jesus, he refused. Thirdly, when he saw something, he said, ah, 
they were telling others that this man had been with Jesus, he denied three times. But God of mercy, who can uphold and make somebody who has fall to, or fallen to or who has fallen to rise again, in John 21, 15 to 17, John 21, 15 to 17, Jesus restored him back three times. He fell three times and he got restoration back three times. Maybe you are down today because of the lockdown. I congratulate you. You are going to rise again in Jesus' name because God will uphold you in this season. No matter what has brought you down, whether because of financial mishap, whether because of the recess that this lockdown has brought to your business, whatever be the case that have locked you down, you are rising again in Jesus' name. We want to pray one or two prayers now and say, Father, please hold me and never to fall in the name of Jesus. Father, please hold me and never to fall in the name of Jesus. Father, please hold me and never to fall in the name of Jesus. Hold me and never to fall in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, give me divine assistance to move forward in the name of Jesus. Give me divine assistance to move forward in the name of Jesus. Give me divine assistance to move forward in the name of Jesus. It shall be so in Jesus' name. I will uphold you also means I will encourage you. In 1 Kings chapter 19, 4 to 7, 1 Kings 19, 4 to 7, you have the story of uh, a great prophet, Elijah. He was discouraged and ran on, uh, and stayed under a tree called Juniper Tree. There the angel met him and woke him up and encouraged him by giving him cake and water. The first time he did it that, the second time he did it again. And now told him, the journey is still great for you. The journey is still far for you. This lockdown will not knock you down in Jesus' name. Sometimes the strongest of men can be depressed. They can be discouraged as we have seen in the life of uh, Elijah, to the extent that he said, I was not better than my father. Better for me to die. What does that mean? That is a suicidal thought. Say, better for me to die. Instead of death, God fed him twice and said to him, the journey is still far. You are not reached the end of the bus stop yet. Whatever situation you are passing through, you think is your end. God is going to solve the problem by upholding you out of that problem and then give you a new beginning. So how will he do that? Upholding means support. He said, I will support you. If you read another fashion, he said, I will support you. He will give you divine support. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, give me divine support and encouragement in the name of Jesus. Give me divine support and encouragement in the name of Jesus. Give me divine support and encouragement in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. It also means I will be there for you. I will be there for you. In Luke chapter 7, verse, uh, starting from 11 to 15, Luke 7, 11 to 15, we have the story of, that you already know of a widow who had only son, and the son, whether he was sick before dying, nobody know, but he, he became dead, and they were to bury him. At the point that they are the gate of the burial ground, or gate of the city, Jesus Christ shoot forth and touched the coffin. I say, young man, it's not yet your time. Get up. That's my own illustration. And he began to speak. This woman have reached the end of the world before Jesus showed up. Number one, 
the husband is, is dead. The only son died. She could not remarry because dead there was knocking in her house. She had been stigmatized. Nobody want to near her. Nobody want to have any dealings with her. Talk less of helping her. But the helper of the helpless, he came and upheld her. And the problem became a, a testimony. I don't know how big your problem may be. The bigger your problem, the greater your testimony will be in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says, he had compassion on her. Number one, he say, weep not. And our weeping ended. Your weeping will come to an end as God upholding you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to ask God and say, Father, have compassion on me and revive every dead situation in my life in the name of Jesus. Father, have compassion on me and revive every dead situation in my life. Have compassion on me and revive every dead situation in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Who need the hands for support and victory? Who need the hands of God to hold him for support and victory? Number one, he that is down emotionally. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 10, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 10, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. This passage was talking about Hannah, who had been looking for the, she had been looking for the fruit of the womb. These days she was emotionally down because she was weeping, she was in this, so it was sorrowful and bitterness of heart. When one is emotionally down, he can still be smiling like others, he can still be walking like others, he can be chatting with others, but inside, fire is burning. Maybe your own case is like that. I don't know what you have been going through. I don't know what I've been passing through you. But God will lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. When someone is emotionally down, frustration setting, depression setting, you might be emotionally down because of your loneliness or because of your barrenness or because of lost profits or lost contracts. It could be of loss of employment due to the present situation we find ourselves. But the same God who has promised to uphold you, will uphold you out of such problem in Jesus' name. So we want to pray and say, Father, you are the hope for the hopeless. Heal me emotionally in the name of Jesus. You are the hope for the hopeless. Heal me emotionally in the name of Jesus. Heal me emotionally in the name of Jesus. Whatever make me to be frustrated or depressed, Father, uphold me out of them now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Who need his hand of support and victory? The one that is down with head challenge. In John chapter 5, 5 to 8, it's a popular story of a man of Parsi for 38 years. When he got to Jesus Christ and he was asking him, do you want me to uphold you now? He said, I have no man. It is possible for some to lose their health. And because of their health challenges, some wife might have been deserted by the husband. Some husband might have been deserted by wife. Some parents might have been deserted by their children because of prolonged health issue. They say, if you want to die, let him cuckoo die. You won't die in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, relations, they deserted this man. He said, I have no man. I don't know your health challenge today. I don't know what doctors have said concerning your health. I don't know the experience of what you are comparing yourself with. 
Because we are hearing this tonight. The one who said I will help you and uphold you. We uphold you out of that sickness in Jesus name. We want to pray and say father. Where I have been deserted. Let me be celebrated again. Where I have been deserted. Let me be celebrated again. Father where I have been deserted. Let me be celebrated again. Amen. Going to pray another prayer and say, Father, make me whole completely in the name of Jesus. Make me whole completely in the name of Jesus. Make me whole completely in the name of Jesus. Make me whole completely in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Who needed his hand of support and victory? He said, I will uphold you. I will support you. He that is down financially. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, when you begin to read from verse 1, or let's say from 9, 9 to 12. 2 Samuel 6, 9 to 12, but if you like, you can read from beginning, from verse 1. That was a story of the ark of, or the, ark of the Lord that was first captured by the Philistines, and then he started killing them, he sent plague to them. You know the story, how they put the ark in the house of dragon and dragon were broken to pieces and they after plague entered into their city and started killing them and they decided what shall we do let's send this ark back and they sent it back and the, the ark of, of the lord went on, the, on its own and got to the farm of somebody called joshua and uh, from there they took it to another city before David heard of it. And David now came with 30,000 men. We sung to jubilating to get the ark of, of, of God back to the city of David. As they were singing, one brother was in the front. Usa was in the back, guiding the ark. And they were singing and jubilating. Suddenly, the ox shook. And Usa was trying to guide the ark not to fall down. And God was annoyed and struck him to death. When David heard this, he said, no, I can't take the ark to my house again. I don't want to, I, I don't want to die yet. But they couldn't see anybody to take the ark to than somebody who they knew that it was financially down. That's the one they thought is worthy to die. I will not be poor in Jesus' name. Amen. Poverty brings shame and brings reproach. Nobody tried to help the, a poor man. But a rich man, everybody will want to help him so that they can get something out of him. So they said, we take it to his house. His name was Obededom. He just stayed three months when God turned his financial situation around. He was so blessed that they, they went and tell uh, David that the fortune of this man have, been, have changed for better. I don't know who I'm talking to. After this lockdown, your fortune will change for better in Jesus' name. Amen. And they quickly told David, David rushed to come and take the act again. But before, within three months, what God wanted to do, he has already done it. What God wants to do in your life financially, not, nobody will be able to stop it in Jesus' name. You're going to pray and say, Father, before end of this year, let me flourish in wealth in Jesus' name. Let me flourish in wealth. Before end of this year, let me begin to flourish in wealth in the name of Jesus. Before end of this year, let me begin to flourish in wealth in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Who need that hands of God to uphold him? The one that has been despised. In 2 Kings chapter 7, when you read verse 1 to 9, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 to 9, the story actually started from 2 Kings chapter 6. You know, when there was famine in Samaria and they locked the gates, and uh, even the women are killing their children to eat. And Elisha prophesied. 
that within 24 hours, farming will change to plenty. But nobody knows whom God will use. You two might have written yourself off, but God can still use you. The four lepers, they were at the gate. They just thought of themselves, say, ah, if we stay here, we will starve to death. If we enter into the city, we will starve to death. Why don't we go to the camp of the enemy and, and uh, surrender to them? That's what they did. By the time they got to the camp of the enemy, God had caused them to hear the voice, the shout of the chariot, horses, and multitude of soldiers. And they ran away, left all their, their oxes and everything, and their food. So when these four lepers got to their camp, they enter in the first tent, they saw food and wine, they took food, they, they drank the wine, and another tent, and another tent. Later, it came to God's purpose. You will fulfill God's purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. They now said, it's not, what we are doing is not good. How can we be doing this for ourselves? We, he said, this is good news. We're supposed to carry this good news so that something terrible will not fall on us. When you begin to witness for Jesus Christ, something terrible will never fall on you. So it, it, they rushed to the city. By the time they got to the city, they told the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper broadcasted it, and then the king had and sent some spy to go and check because the, the king didn't believe. By the time they got there, they brought the, the news back. It was so. So the whole people of the city, they rushed to the camp of the enemy. And uh, the chief who said that will never happen was put in the gate to control the, to, to control the traffic. And there they step on him. Where I'm going is this. These are four lepers that have been despised by friends, by relations, by even law that they cannot come into the community. But God still used them to save a nation. I don't know who I'm talking about. God will use you to bring joy to nation in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, help me to bring joy to nation in the name of Jesus. Help me, help me and use me to bring joy to nation in Jesus' name. Father, help me and use me to bring joy to nation in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. We want to pray another prayer and say, Father, please use me for your glory. Father, use me for your glory in the name of Jesus. Use me for your glory. Uphold me and use me for your glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Who need the divine support that God will uphold his hand with the hand of righteousness, a hand of victory? He that is down spiritually. In Acts of Apostles chapter 2, 1 to 4. Act 2, 1 to 4. The apostles gathered together at the upper room, and the Holy Spirit fell upon them like a tongue of fire and rest upon them. And their story, the story of their life changed. When you come to, if you read the act of our Apostle chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus Christ said, don't go and be testifying or witnessing for me. He said, first go to Jerusalem until you are in deal with power. Any Christian that have no power of the Holy Spirit, who is not baptized in the Holy Spirit, is not different from an ordinary person. I was sharing it with my wife early this morning. I said, why, what, how we, could we have been if we are not having the assistance of the Holy Spirit? Many things that could have happened that God will direct us. I said, as a child of God, you need the Holy Spirit. So that he made the difference between you and ordinary person. He guides you, he directs you, he leads you, he reveals things to you. There's no much time, but we have to pray and say, Father, rekindle your fire in me in the name of Jesus. Rekindle your fire in me in the name of Jesus. Father, rekindle your fire in me in the mighty name of Jesus. Rekindle your fire in me in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God, we baptize you with the Holy Spirit again in Jesus' name. In conclusion, 
Before God can uphold you, you must belong to him. So number one thing you need to do is to surrender your life to him. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady, I will give you rest. It's me in another way. That Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 say, if you come unto him, he will uphold you with his hand of righteousness. Until you obey him, there's not much he can do for you. It all starts by surrendering to him. Number two, seek his kingdom. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto all that you are looking for. They are additional in the kingdom. So if you can see the kingdom, they will become yours. And number three, you need to ask. Ask him to uphold you. Ask him to uphold you. Psalm 121, 1 and 2. Psalm 121, 1 and 2. David said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. We are coming my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which make heaven and the earth. If you cry unto him and say, help me, uphold me, he will do so in your life. Are you ready to say that? We will pray over that later. But you have heard. You need to surrender to Jesus Christ. Become his family before he can uphold you. If you are willing to do that, that Lord, I give myself to you. I know you died for me. I know you resurrected the, last, the third day. I know you are my Lord and my Savior. I give my all to you today and I begin to serve you. If you are ready, please bow down your head and let's pray together. Father, we bless your name for all your children that might have decided to follow you from today, that have surrendered their heart to you. Receive them in Jesus' name. Make them your children in Jesus' name. Give them the joy of salvation in Jesus' name. And never to go back to the world again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. And the rest of us, we just need one prayer. If God is upholding you, if God is by your side, who can be against you? No demon, no principality, no force of darkness can overpower you because he's holding you in his hand. And when he's holding you, you can't fall. You can't come down. And you will never come down in Jesus' name. We're going to pray and say, Father, hold me with your hand permanently. Father, hold me with your hand permanently in the name of Jesus. Hold me with your hand of righteousness permanently in the name of Jesus. Father, hold me with your hand of righteousness permanently in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now we're going to pray. And I want to assure you, Daddy, our Father, the Lord is praying for us in this program. So if you have any problem that you are brought to this faith clinic, begin to talk to God by faith and connect your faith to the prayer we are going to pray and you will receive solution in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for today. We know we cannot hold ourselves, but you can do so. You will hold us from falling in the name of Jesus. You will hold us out of poverty in the name of Jesus. You will hold us out of problems that have become trademark in the name of Jesus. You will hold us out of sickness in the name of Jesus. And the glory shall be returned to you alone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Now it's time to give our offering. And you know our service cannot 